Hi, in this video we're going to have a look at how we can export the Dolby Atmos Panner metadata into the Pro Tools Panner so that we can use the inbuilt Pro Tools renderer uh, because obviously the uh, inbuilt renderer does not support the Dolby Atmos Panner. So first of all the playback engine is going to be our normal sound card, in this case my Radat and we're also going to double check that we are actually going to be using the internal renderer for this project. Okay, so I'm going to load up this Pro Tools session which was done using the external renderer. And if we open up the renderer and I hit play. Oh, um, once we switch to the internal renderer, we do actually have to hit play on all the object buttons. So I'm just going to select all the tracks. Hold down Alt. And there we can see all the objects have come, but there's no movement at all because that's obviously embedded in the panner. So the most foolproof way I found of doing this, because you might miss some height information or some size information, is to actually, um, all my projects, uh, each track is an object. So this is quite long winded for me, but we're gonna have to enable all the automation lanes on all the instances of the Dolby Atmos panel that we have. So just let me go through this and I'll um, be back in a sec. Okay, so we've done all that. Um, one thing we do have to check as well is that we have to make sure if we go to the window automation settings that we are actually going to be recording the plugging and volume um, information. So make sure that all these are in red. Okay. So now we've done that and while we've got all the tracks selected um, I can hold down the Alt button and we can touch update every single track. And actually, let's find... Um, okay, here we have a track which we know has got some panning information, which is this pack here. So let's just... Um, open that up and we'll just have a look at one of the lanes just to make sure so now we're all set up we're ready to touch update and now we set the panner to right and that will actually set that to every instance of the panner okay and just to be on the safe side I'm going to set the session Start at zero, maintain position. Okay, so we're all set. Uh, that's set to right. And when we hit play, you can see the automation being written down. I'll uh, just open up the renderer window. And you can see there's no movement. So we're just going to write this uh, for the rest of the uh, track. OK, 
Okay, great. So we've done that. Uh, we're just going to make sure, hold Alt again, because we've got them all selected. We're going to put these on to read. And on the one of the panners, we'll just turn that off, like so. Okay. So now, all we need to do is we go to the Edit window, Automation, Duplicate Dolby Atmos Plugin Automation to Pan Automation. Um, undoable. Well, it is if you've resaved it earlier on. Um, okay, so now when I hit play, actually, it does take a while for it to write this information. Um, so we'll just let it do its thing. I can see there's some bits here flashing. I don't know whether that means anything. You can see it's starting to come now. Yeah, this takes a little while, so just be a bit patient. Eventually, everything gets written down, and now you can see we have our movement. And so that's how you copy the information. And the reason this is important for me is because. Now, uh, oh, we can lose the LTC, because we don't need that time code. But we can create now um, a new 7.1.4 bus. Make it a master fader. And we're going to say that master fader takes its signal from the renderer, 7.1.4. And now we can finally load... Direct Live multi-channel room corrector. Uh, this is the one I'm using at the moment. And as you can see, all the data is copied. And now we've successfully moved into internal renderer. We can get rid of all instances of Dolby surround panel. Okay, so there's no instances now of the Dolby surround panel. Oh, there's one left here. There we go, we're fully converted. And now with room correction. And I have to say, the uh, Dirac uh, room correction is absolutely outstanding. And I've been using it um, with comp to compare Apple Music releases um, to make sure that my mixes are up to spec and sound good. So I hope that helps someone, and I'll uh, catch you next time. I've